Hi, this is Bob Akdashi and welcome to What's New in the HCM 7th edition series. In this episode, we are going to talk about two-lane highways methodology. That's a brand new method in the Highway uh, Capacity Manual version 7, which is housed in chapter 15. Uh, before we dive into what's new in this method, I have a hint, and that's the that's the thing that you know this methodology basically got created before the publication of HCM7. It actually the draft version got released in year 2019 in HCM Volume 4 of HCM 6 edition. Uh, so it was uh, pretty much available at that time, the draft methodology. HCS7, which implements methods from HCM6, actually adopted this new methodology and as sort of, you know, uh, made it available, you know, in parallel to what was in the HCM6 edition in year 2020-2021. Uh, then this, all that draft material got uh, final revision before the publication of HCM7, and uh, the final version basically is, got released by HCS 2022, HCS 2023. So I just want to make sure that uh, you guys understand, if you see, you know, this method has been implemented in the old HCS7, uh, it may not be the, the most recent version. There have been some revisions basically performed uh, since then up until the publication of HCM7. So let's make sure that we are using the latest version of HCM so that you know it has that final material in the HCM 7th edition. So with that said, let's take a look and see what do we have in this new methodology. Here, the way I'm gonna basically you know, go over this new edition is that I'm gonna basically show it in the form of a table to contrast you know, what was in HCM 6 edition, what is new in HCM 7, so that we all understand you know, what is gone and what is not basically valid anymore. So uh, the biggest uh, difference in the new method for two-lane highway is that now we have different segment types that we can create facilities. We have three uh, main segment types, which are passing zones, passing constraint, and passing lanes. And with these three, we can create any two-lane highway facilities that we want. Uh, so if in the old uh, basically method, you know, we had, we were only able to analyze one segment and we, then within that one segment, we need to say, you know, how much, you know, what fraction of that length was, you know, lane at what fraction was, you know, passing zone and et cetera. So we don't need any of those. Another big addition is that we have gone away from that classification of two-lane highways. Uh, as you know, uh, previous method, we had this class one, two, three of two-lane highways, and depending on, you know, what two-lane highway, what classification we pick, you know, performance measures are different, service measure was different, you know, a level of service would change. So it was pretty controversial to go about even selecting, you know, what class of two-lane highway is the two-lane highway that we want to analyze. So that whole classification things has gone away. We don't need to deal with any classes of two-lane highways. Speaking of performance measures, now we have a new performance measure it's called follower density, which is also our service measure that determines the level of service on the two-lane highway segments as well as two-lane highway uh, facilities. Uh, as you can see, you know, previously we had three other, you know, service measures corresponded to the three, you know, classification of two-lane highways. That all is gone. Follower density is what we need to focus from now on. Of course, besides follower density, this new methodology is able to produce other performance measures as MOEs as well. So speaking of heavy vehicles, the way that this methodology accounts for that is through a direct input into the method. So basically there's a direct uh, parameter that we need to enter, input it in the models that we have that says what fraction of the uh, traffic or heavy vehicle. Previously, you know, we had to say, you know, what fraction was they were heavy vehicles and then go up, you know, to go about, you know, equivalency factors and PCEs, try to find basically, you know, what would be equivalent traffic as if they were all passenger cars. All that thing again is gone. It's way more simpler and basically to the point when it comes to accounting for heavy vehicles. Speaking of capacities, uh, previously HCM would go with 1,700 passenger car per hour. Now we, by default, it's 1,700 vehicle per hour. And then if you are dealing with passing lane segments, basically there's a lookup table that we need to go, in, go and find you know, what the capacity numbers are. But that's pretty much in, they are in the same range. At the bottom of this slide, I'm showing two level of service determination tables for HCM 6 and 7 editions. As you can see, service measures are different. 
uh, and then we don't have any classifications. Uh, so it's just way more simpler and easier and more efficient to use this methodology to analyze two-lane highways. One great addition to the new method is that we are able to divide segments into sub-segments, whether we are dealing with curved segments or not. So we can basically, you know, do that, subs, uh, do that segmentation again on top of segment. We call it sub-segments. And sub-segments, they are either could be like a tangent or horizontal curve, depending on that curvature that we have in the roadway. And the speed estimation basically is done uh, on top of every sub-segments. Which then, you know, for tangent, you know, straight sub-segments, we just uh, expect to have a higher speed. And then when we are dealing with, you know, curves, you know, we are estimating to have uh, lower speeds. And that can be captured when we do a speed estimation, uh, basically, at the resolution of sub-segments. And that graph that I'm showing on the right side of the screen, it shows how would HCM 6 and 7 methods go about estimating the speed. So HCM6 old method just would go with one estimation across the segment. So that, that is that orange dotted line. As you can see, it's like one number for the entire segment. But then when we look into HCM7's prediction, we see more resolution you know, in different sub-segments that we have. That basically, you know, uh, brings additional accuracy toward our uh, analysis. Another big feature that has been added is that now we can do analysis for super two highways. These are common facilities, mostly in Europe, but nowadays we see more and more, you know, in the United States as well. And basically these are like three lane stretch of, you know, uh, uh, a roadway that middle lane basically, you know, uh, changes direction into the two sides that acts as a lane add basically an alternate fashion for the two direction. Now we are able to do this analysis given the new methodology. I do have a real world case study here that I want to go over it so that we make ourselves familiar that how this methodology works in practice. I have picked a two lane highway facility in uh, Ocala, Florida, which is just half an hour you know, south of where we are. And that's in a, basically a recreational area called Juniper Spring, and uh, it's Florida Highway 40. And uh, this is basically how it looks like on the map. So I want to do analysis of this two-lane highway based on HCM and see, you know, what would be the performance measures that HCM can predict. As you can see, uh, based on the geometry that we have, we have divided this two-lane highway facility into five segments. First segment uh, basically is passing zone followed by two passing constraint, one passing lane and then another passing constraint. At the first slide you may think, okay, so why do we have segment two and three? Why we have this you know, segment line between the two? Because the geometries are the same, but the fact is that there's a significant demand change between these two segments that basically pushes us as a, to, to evaluate these two as two different segments and act as a segment boundary. As you can see here in this table, I'm showing the, what is the uh, demand flow rate in the direction of travel and then between segment two and three, uh, it's basically significantly different. As you can see, we have opposing volume for segment number one. That's only needed when we are doing analysis for uh, passing zone segments. So uh, that's how we do segmentation. And then uh, since we are do, uh, dealing with a couple of curves within this, this two-lane highway, segment three and four, we need to divide that into three sub-segments each. As you can see, we have two tangent and one horizontal curve between the two. And then uh, these are all other geometric information that we need to supply this method with. Uh, segment and sub-segment lens. When we are dealing with, you know, horizontal curve, we need to say what's the, that radius for that curve and super elevation. Uh, this bottom basically picture shows a screenshot of how we can do this in the software, highway capacity software. Uh, as you can see, all the inputs are basically uh, entered and basically, you know, once we do that, uh, this is how method can predict different MOEs, either across segments, for example, speed, follower density, which is our service measure across different segments, 
as well as we can aggregate them to have it across the facility. For example, in this facility, the aggregated follower density is 3.9, which corresponds to the level of service B. And also we, need, we, we can see the, how it fluctuates segment by segment in the graph that I have on the right side of the screen. Here I have a snapshot of how this analysis would have been done in the old methodology, uh, just so that you get a sense of like, you know, how uh, neat and clear and accurate this new method is. So if you would have need to analyze this uh, facility in the old ACM, we should consider this as one segment, and then say what percentage of these segments are you know, passing zones, passing constraint and what fraction is, you know, passing lane. And then based on that, basically that methodology was well, to try to estimate what performance measures are. And of course, you know, what it would have uh, generated was across just one segment, which is our entire facility with pretty low resolution. 